Megalodon As one of the largest predators to have ever lived, Megalodon captures people's imagination, and for good reason. But was this apex predator simply a beefed-up great white shark? And is it still lurking in the dark depths of the ocean? If you're interested in knowing more about this beastly creature, stay tuned till the end of the video. But before we hop into the details, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends. For those who don't know, the earliest megalodon fossils of the Atotus megalodon, previously known as the Carcharodon or Carcharoclus megalodon, date to 20 million years ago. For the next 13 million years, the enormous shark dominated the oceans until becoming extinct just 3.6 million years ago. Megalodon was not only the biggest shark in the world, but one of the largest fish ever to exist. Estimates suggest it grew to between 15 and 18 meters in length, three times longer than the largest recorded great white shark. Without a complete megalodon skeleton, these figures are based on the size of the animal's teeth, which can reach 18 centimeters long. Megalodon was one of the largest fish the world has ever seen. Today, the largest fish in the ocean are whale sharks. These channel feeders are normally somewhere in the range of 18 to 32 feet. For a little added contrast, the greatest length of your normal school transport quantifies roughly 45 feet. That's right, this is an exceptionally large shark. Notwithstanding, in opposition to mainstream media, it looked somewhat not the same as a giant great white. Most current portrayals paint Megalodon as looking similar to the supersized incredible great white shark, and a lot of that is because of the way that researchers thought for a long while that the great white and Megalodon shared a typical progenitor. Today, it's accepted that Megalodon was really a last type of a different ancestry of shark. Regarding its appearance, ways that it contrasts from your exemplary incredible white incorporate a more narrow jaw, long pectoral fins, and a more limited small nose, known as rostrum. The word megalodon actually means large tooth. The large part is a big deal either. These teeth grew up to 7 inches in length, giving the normal generically speaking size of these creatures and the size of the prey they burned through, enormous megafauna like sharks, whales, and so on, the size of their teeth bodes well. In the event you need to see something really awe-inspiring, look into a photograph of an extraordinary white's tooth, which are close to the megalodon. Talk about satisfying its name, isn't that so? Their fossils have been found all over the world. Triangular, it's thick, it's got serrated cutting edges. This is an animal that had teeth adapted for feeding on quite large. The oldest of these fossils date back to around 20 million years ago and the idea to have been wiped out somewhat more than three and a half million years back says a lot about how old it must have been. This is a madly significant time frame as the biggest shark in the ocean, huh? You will not discover megalodon skeletons as fossils since, like those of present-day sharks, they're made of ligament rather than bone. However, we do have fossilized megalodon teeth as they're made of a hard calcified tissue called dentin. Megalodon teeth are shockingly normal, like most sharks, they are continuously lost teeth over the span of their life. Since Megalodon swam unreservedly in the tropical and subtropical waters everywhere on the globe, these fossils have been accounted for to have been found on each mainland aside from Antarctica. Their teeth and vertebra aren't all that's been found, though. Believe it or not, researchers have obviously discovered frozen bits of their excrement as well. One report from a site in South Carolina archives coprolites the extravagant scientific term for fossilized crap of an enormous shark, the biggest of which added up to around 5.5 inches long. I'm really not certain what else to say about that other than, indeed, it's an absolutely intriguing story to tell whenever you're in South Carolina. Put all those teeth together and you have what's calculated to be one of the most powerful bite forces in the world. With a jaw assessed to quantify around 9 by 11 feet, researchers have determined that Megalodon's biting power would be around 40,000 pounds for every square inch. Contrast that with Tyrannosaurus rex, which had a chomp power of 12,000 pounds for every square inch, and it's unmistakable you have a strong nibble on your hands. Still not persuaded? Our bite force as humans is just slightly more than 160 pounds for every square inch. As indicated by specialists, that 40,000 pound bite force is the most impressive of any animal that has at any point existed. 
Though pop culture has certainly sparked rumors over the years, most of the experts don't think Megalodon is still alive today. In case if you have at any point seen the film The Meg, you understand what I'm alluding to. There are speculations that have been spread from other people that, hello, if 80% of our sea actually stays neglected, how would we know without a doubt that this animal has really become extinct? Wouldn't it be able to, maybe, avoid human contact in the remote ocean? While unquestionably a captivating and incredible thought, by far most of the researchers don't accept this to be conceivable, essentially highlighting its size as the issue. The vast majority of the megalodon's potential prey live in shallower sea zones where there's loads of food to eat as opposed to the remote ocean. On the off chance that these creatures were, truth be told, alive, researchers say it's highly unlikely we wouldn't have probably some thought of it. So how did the creature become an extinct species? Researchers feel that up to 33% of all big-sized marine creatures, including 43% of turtles and 35% of ocean fowls, got extinct as temperatures cooled and the quantity of organic entities at the base of the evolved way of life plunged, bringing about a thump on impact to the hunters at the top. The cooling of the planet may have added to the annihilation of the megalodon in various manners, as the grown-up sharks were reliant on tropical waters. The drop in sea temperatures probably brought about a critical loss of territory. It might likewise have brought about the megalodon's prey either going terminated or adjusting to the cooler waters and moving to where the sharks couldn't follow. Megalodon is additionally thought to have been brought forth its young offspring near the shore. These shallow beachfront waters would have given a nursery to the pups, shielding them from hunters that were sneaking in the untamed water, similar to the bigger-toothed whales. As ice framed at the shafts and the ocean level dropped, these pupping grounds would have been obliterated. But what would happen if it was still alive? The sharks would lead obvious indentations on the other huge marine creatures and their enormous teeth would keep littering the seafloor. Also, as a warm water animal category, Megalodon would have not had the option to make do in the deep oceans, where it would have a superior possibility of going unnoticed. Unlike humans who only produce teeth during the early stages of life, sharks continue to produce new sets throughout their entire lives, losing their teeth almost every two weeks. Most Megalodons would go through about 40,000 teeth in their lifetime, that's a lot of remains left for us to discover. Their teeth would sink down to the bottom of the ocean, where they would likely be fossilized. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to hit the like button, give it the thumbs up, and subscribe to our new channel. Make sure you hit the blue icon to stay up to date with our latest videos.